Hello everyone. I'm Myung Su Jung from South Korea. I'm a senior solutions architect and I'm in charge of Samsung Group's financial affiliate. Today, I'm here to talk about safeguarding sensitive data used in generative AI with lag. Firstly, I'm going to talk about my customers' strategies for generative AI. And then, I'm going to talk about the initial lag architecture and some issue points. Finally, I'm going to present the secure enhanced lag architecture and demos. My customers are all interested in generative AI, as you are. They wanted to apply generative AI to their chatbot service. At first, they, they tried to use the foundation model that was already made by another company. However, they quickly realized that they couldn't do what they wanted with the typical foundation model because foundation model trains from data on internet, so it can't provide the right answer customers want. So my customers decided to customize the foundation model. The easiest and cheapest way to do this is prom with prompt engineering, but this method is not effective. The opposite approach is to create their own foundation model or fine-tune the existing foundation model. But this is not only expensive, but also requires a lot of AI knowledge. So my customers have found a compromise. It is a retrieval augmented generation, also known as RAG. The RAG is a way to pass context with the prompt to get the right answer without retraining the foundation model. Uh, this is the traditional lag architecture, and my customers also considered it. To explain this architecture, customer internal data is uploaded to Amazon S3 over the internet, and then changed to vector format via Amazon Bedrock's embedding model, and then stored in Amazon OpenSearch service. And then when customer make queries to Amazon Bedrock, they pass the context of this vector DB along with it. But recently, AWS released two features in Amazon Bedrock that make this lag architecture much simpler. Uh, those are these two features. Uh, Agent for Amazon Bedrock features helps you build generative AI application using foundation models. And the knowledge basis for Amazon Bedrock feature that helps implement the REC architecture. However, today, I'm going to focus on security rather than explaining these features. So if you are interested in these features, please visit AWS website to look them up. So the REC architecture with these two features is like this. So from now on, I'm going to start with this architecture and I'm going to show you the steps to hardening it securely. Uh, first of all, there are five main issue points in this architecture. In particular, four and five are very closely related to data protection. So let's look at them one by one. The first to implement the REC architecture, you first need to upload your internal data to Amazon S3. If you are using the internet over the non-dedicated network, there is a risk of your data being stolen or altered by unauthorized users. Therefore, AWS recommends that you create a dedicated network over the AWS Direct Connect or AWS Site-to-Site -Site VPN instead of the internet. The second point is load balancer facing internet. The threat actor could send a large number of requests and incur excessive costs or a service may go down due to events such as DDoS. There are many security options for these internet-facing areas, but AWS recommends the AWS WAF. AWS WAF blocks requests from the uh, specific sources that exceed certain threshold. 
and preventing excessive cost and service outage. The third point is this. Uh, for secure cloud environment, it is recommended to isolate network as much as possible. It is an especially important requirement for Korean financial companies. This is because Korea has strong regulations on financial industry. Fortunately, regulations are slowly changing, but my customers want to, uh, sti still want to keep their network separate from the internet. That's why AWS offers VPCs for network isolation. And using a VPC endpoint, you can ensure that data flows only within AWS, not over the internet. And now we come to the point of data protection. As you mentioned earlier, in order to implement the REC architecture, you need to upload your internal data to Amazon S3. Of course, your company will not upload any sensitive data or personal information that shouldn't shouldn't be, shouldn't not, shouldn't be not <laughs> uploaded. <Yeah>. Sorry, <laughs> uploaded. But mistakes can always happen. So what happens if you upload uh, your internal data that you shouldn't? Not only will you at the risk of a lawsuit, but your company's reputation will also be damaged. To reduce this risk, AWS provides the Amazon Mesh service, which automatically detects when sensitive data is uploaded to Amazon S3. Amazon Mesh service can find the two main types of data. So first is data that may have policy issues. For example, Amazon Mesh can find the data that is publicly accessible or unencrypted. The second is sensitive data. For example, uh, personally identifiable information or sensitive financial information. And you can also register regular expression, and it's very useful if you have different type of sensitive data, like uh, uh, such as in Korea. The last point is getting sensitive or harmful answers from Amazon Bedrock. For example, the general questions about how to make a bomb, how to steal someone's car, or anything related to racism will not be answered. But it does answer vicious jailbreak techniques. Jailbreaking techniques are improving every day. So as you mentioned earlier, uh, REC is the architecture that answers based on customer information so there is a possibility that unexpected questions can be asked to uh, extract customer confidential information. However, recently released Guardrails for Amazon Bedrock feature that makes, makes it more secure and easier to filter answers by implementing responsible AI. So Guardrails for Amazon Bedrock features filters out harmful content from Amazon Bedrock's answer like this. And here's how Godless for Amazon Bedrock feature works. A user input and the foundation model output are not passed directly, but are filtered through Godless in between them. The answers are filtered by the preset of denied topic, a content filter, PII reduction, and word filter before being displayed. Uh, it's not over yet. The AWS core security services remain. Adding an AWS IAM service to manage permissions and the KMS service to encrypt the data at last provides a strong security foundation. So next, I'm going to show you two simple demos based on this architecture. The first demo is about sensitive data detection. I'm going to show you process of detecting through Amazon Macy 
when sensitive data is uploaded to Amazon S3. Uh, this screen is from Amazon Bedrock and go to the knowledge basis for the REC architecture I already created. And you can check which Amazon S3 bucket is used as a data source for the REC architecture. And I have uploaded the file containing sensitive data. And this file contains a passport number and bank account number and Korean social security number. And this data is, should not be used as a source for the REC. So to detect this sensitive data, we go to the Amazon Macy service and let's create a job to detect them. And you can select the S3 bucket to detect and you can also set the schedule like this. And you can see the various type of sensitive data uh, provided by AWS but I choose the custom type. And among these, I select a USA passport number and USA bank account number. And as mentioned earlier, uh, in the case of sensitive data type that uh, AWS does not provide, you can detect them with regular expression like this. And what you see on the screen is a regular expression that detects Korean social security number. And attach a regular expression rule to the job. And after review settings, and it will be done. And it's very easy and very simple. And you can check the result in the findings menu so you can see the multiple sensitive data have been detected in this file. And if you look closely, uh, you can see the file name containing sensitive data. And you can also see the one Korean social security number and one bank account number and one pa when passport number were detected in this file. And using reveal samples feature, you can check how many cases have been detected. And you can easily check actual data. So you can see the data in the file and the result data are the same. And second demo is about guardrails for Amazon Bedra. I'm going to show you process of uh, Filter, filters out uh, sensitive response using guardrails for Amazon Bedrock. Uh, this screen is again uh, Amazon Bedrock service and let's create a guardrail uh, to filter response. And you can determine uh, types and intensities of what you want to filter in the prompt porch and the responses. And you can also set the denied topic like this. And you can also set the word filter in here. And in, the, in this demonstration, I'm going to mask only phone number portion uh, if response contains phone numbers. And I'm going to block entire uh, response if response contains passport number. And you can also set a message when it is blocked. So I set a message like this. And it's done. It's also very easy and very simple. So let's test it. So this screen is a REC application I already created. And this REC application is without guardrails for Amazon Bedrock. And I asked how can I contact my claim manager and you can see the claim manager's phone number engine 4462. So Amazon Bedrock will answer this phone number based on this PDF file. Because this application is lag based. So you can see the phone number engine 4462 on the screen. And I asked the, what is James's passport number? 
and Amazon Bedrock answers correct passport number based on the file, file uh, you saw in the demo earlier. And this screen is after Gardel recreated is applied. Uh, I asked the same question as before. How can I contact my claim manager? And you can see the phone numbers have been masked like this. And I asked the same question as before. What is James's passport number? Uh, since passport number has been blocked, completely blocked, so you can see the message I set up earlier. So let's just summarize content so far. Uh, firstly, use an AWS Direct Connect or AWS Site-to-Site -site VPN between on-premises and AWS. And use an AWS WAF and AWS Private Link to protect your sensitive data on your network. And by using an Amazon Macy's service, you can prevent your sensitive data from being exposed. And lastly, consider using Godless for Amazon Bedra for responsible AI. And in order to dodge explained today, there are many more ways to protect your sensitive data used in generative AI. However, if you only apply uh, what you see on the screen now, uh, you will be able to enjoy great result with little effort. So thank you, for, th thank you very much for listening so far. If you have further questions, please contact me. I'm Myung Su-jung from South Korea. Thank you.